In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to make this 3D model of a sport bottle. The blender version that I'm using is 4.1. During the video, I'll be giving you some exact distance and scale values to make it easier to follow along. Feel free to use different values. We'll start by pressing X to delete the cube. Then press Shift A and add a mesh circle. Change the number of vertices to 16. Now press Tab for Edit Mode and then press A to select all. To zoom and center it, I'll press the period on the number pad. Next we're going to extrude on the Z axis by pressing E, then Z, then point 8, then Enter. Now press E to extrude and then right click. What we've just done is to extrude by a distance of 0. This gave us another set of connected vertices. Now we'll scale these new vertices by pressing S, then point 7, and then Enter. We'll repeat this again. So press E to extrude and right click. Then press S, then point 7, and then Enter. Next press 7 on the number pad for top view. We're going to move these two vertices so that these edges will be horizontal and this edge will be vertical. So select this vertex, then change the snap mode to vertex. Now move on the Y axis by pressing G and then Y. Then hold down the control key and click this vertex. Since we're holding the control key, we're snapping to this vertex. And since our move is restricted to the Y axis, our vertex will snap to the Y location of this vertex, but not the X location. Now we'll move it on the X axis, so press G and then X. This time, hold down the control key and snap to this vertex. Next, select this vertex. Press G, then Y, then hold down the control key and snap to this vertex. Next, we'll repeat these steps on the other side. So select this vertex. Press G, then Y, then hold down the control key and click this vertex. Then press G, then X, then hold the control key and snap to this vertex. Then select this vertex, press G, then Y, then hold down the control key and snap to this vertex. Now switch to face select mode and select this face. Then hold down the shift key and click on this face to add it to the selection. Then extrude by pressing E and extrude by about 1. You can look up here to see how far you're extruding. Next we'll add a couple of loop cuts to get ready to connect these two together. So press Ctrl R, left click, type minus 0.3, and left click again. Then repeat on the other side. So press Ctrl R, left click, minus 0.3, and left click. Now switch to face select mode and select this face. Then while holding the shift key, click this face to add it to the selection. Then from the edge menu, select bridge edge loops. Next, press 3 on the number pad for side view. Then press Z and switch to wireframe view. Now switch to edge select mode and select these edges. Then rotate by pressing R, then 20, then enter. Then move on the Y axis by pressing G, then Y, then point 32, then enter. Now press Z and switch to solid view. Next we're going to add a flat bevel around the front edges. So Alt-click this front edge to select it. You'll notice that it only selects the front edge and not the back. Now while holding the Shift key, click these outside edges to add them to the selection. Then to add the bevel, press Ctrl B, type 0 .07, and then Enter. Now expand the Options panel. Later we're going to be adding a subdivision surface modifier to smooth out some edges. We can keep these edges sharp by adding additional geometry. So change the number of segments to 4. By default, the bevel is rounded, but we're going to make it flat. To do that, change the profile type to Custom, because the custom default shape is flat. You can use this area to reshape the bevel, but for this project, we're going to keep the flat shape. Next, let's add another bevel. So Alt-click this edge ring. Then while holding the Shift key, click these edges to add them to the selection. Then press Ctrl B, 0 .07, and then Enter. This will remember the other settings from the previous bevel. 
By the way, you'll notice that I included this edge ring as part of the bevel, even though it's flat. If I were to only bevel the inside edge of the handle, then the geometry would look like this. A face with seven vertices is generally not good practice. When we later add a subdivision surface modifier, this area may not look as we expect. Next, press 7 on the number pad for top view and switch to vertex select mode. Now we're going to make a rectangle area in the middle of the lid. So click anywhere in the background to deselect everything. Then press C and select these vertices. Right click to end the selection. Then scale on the X axis by pressing S, then X, then 0, then Enter. Now move on the X axis by pressing G, then X, then minus 0.1, then Enter. We'll do the same to the other side. So I'll click the background to deselect all. Then press C and select these vertices. Then scale by pressing S, then X, then 0, then Enter. Then move by pressing G, then X, then point 1, then Enter. Next, select these three vertices. Move them by pressing G, then Y, then point 2, then Enter. Now select these three vertices. Then scale by pressing S, then Y, then 0, then Enter. Then move by pressing G, then Y, then point 3, then Enter. Next, select these vertices, then scale by pressing S, then point 7, then Enter. Now select this vertex. Move it by pressing G, then Y, then minus point 1, then Enter. Now select all of these vertices. Move them by pressing G, then Y, then minus point 0.15, then Enter. Next, we're going to add some depth to this. So Alt click this edge to select the whole ring of edges. Then extrude by pressing E, then Z, then minus 0.4, then Enter. Then add a face by pressing F and then select Make Edge Face. Next, tab into Object Mode and add a Subdivision Surface Modifier. I'm going to increase both of these values to 3. Then right click and select Shade Smooth. Now tab back into Edit Mode and switch to Edge Select Mode. We're going to sharpen some edges in the rectangle area by moving some geometry. So select this edge near the back of the box. Then press G twice to move it. If you only press G once, the edge will not be constrained. By pressing G twice, it will slide along the edges that it's connected to. Slide it near the back to sharpen the corner. I'll repeat this three more times. So I'll select this edge, press G twice, and drag it here. Then I'll move this one. And then I'll move this one. Next, we'll sharpen the top and bottom of the rectangle area. So add a loop cut by pressing Ctrl R, then click here and drag it up then click again, then press Ctrl R, click here and drag it down, then click again. Next we'll add some loop cuts to the handle. So press Ctrl R, use the scroll wheel to make two loops and then left click and then right click. Repeat that here, and then repeat it again on the top. Currently, this lid does not have any thickness, so add a Solidify modifier. Set the thickness to minus 0.1. Using a negative number will add the thickness to the inside instead of the outside. If the normals were flipped on the lid, then using a negative number would add the thickness to the outside. Now move the Solidify modifier to the top. Then press Ctrl R to add a loop cut near the bottom. Now we're done with the main portion of the lid. Now let's work on the mouthpiece. So tab into Object Mode. Press Shift A and add a Mesh UV Sphere. 
Then tab back into edit mode and press A to select all. Then press 3 on the number pad for side view. In order to better see the relationship between these two objects, turn on X-ray. Now press G and move it up here. Then press 7 on the number pad for top view. Next we'll scale it by pressing S, then point .35, then Enter. Then rotate it by pressing R, then Y, then 90, then Enter. Now we're going to flatten the edges of the sphere, so select these edges. Then press S, then X, then 0, then Enter. Then move them by pressing G, then X, then drag them inside of the rectangle area, and left click. We'll repeat this on the other side. So select these edges, then press S, then X, then 0, then Enter. Then press G, then X, then drag them inside the rectangle area and left click. We're done with X-Ray now, so turn it off. Next, press A to select all. Then press G, then Y, then move it down here and left click. Now we're going to move it down until the top of the flat area is close to the top of the lid. So press G, then Z, then move down and left click. Next, switch to face select mode. Then select this face. Then while holding the shift key, add these faces to the selection. Now we're going to extrude these faces. So press E, then point 7, then enter. Next, press 3 on the number pad for side view. Now press Ctrl R and add a loop cut here. Then press Ctrl R and add another loop cut here. Then switch to face select mode and select these faces. We're going to extrude them. So press 3 on the number pad for side view. Then press E, then Y, then drag here and left click. Then rotate by pressing R and adjust it until it's approximately vertical. Then scale by pressing S, then Z, then point 8, then Enter. Next, tab into Object Mode and add a Subdivision Surface Modifier. I'm going to increase both of these values. Now right-click and select Shade Smooth. Then tab back into Edit Mode. Next, we'll add some loop cuts to define the shape better. So press Ctrl R and add a loop cut here. Then add another one here. Then add another one here. And add another one here. Next, switch to Face Select Mode and select all the faces at the end of the mouthpiece. Then press I to inset the faces by about this much. This will sharpen the edges. We're done with the mouthpiece. Next we'll make the bottle. So tab into Object Mode. Then press Shift-A and add a mesh cylinder. Then tab into Edit Mode and press A to select all. Now scale by pressing S, then 1.2, then Enter. Then scale again by pressing S, then Z, then 2, then Enter. Next, press 1 on the number pad for front view and switch to wireframe view. Let's move the bottle into position, so press G, then Z, then move it until the top of the bottle is about even with the middle of the base of the lid. Now we'll give the bottle some shape. So press Ctrl R and add a loop cut about two small grid divisions below the bottom of the lid. Then add another loop cut about three small grid divisions below that. Next, switch to face select mode and Alt click to select the top ring of faces. Now we're going to scale on the X and Y axis, but not the Z axis. To do that, press S, then Shift Z, then scale it to the inside of the lid. Next, add another loop cut right below the bottom of the lid. Then switch to Face Select mode, and Alt click to select the ring of faces below the bottom of the lid. Now press E to extrude, and then right click. 
then scale only on the X and Y axis by pressing S, then shift Z, then scale to the outside of the lid. Now switch to solid view. Next we'll smooth out the edges. So tab into object mode and add a subdivision surface modifier. I'm going to increase these levels. Then right click and select Shade Smooth. Now tab back into edit mode. To make it easier to see what we're doing, temporarily hide the lid. Now we'll refine the shape of the bottle. So add a loop cut near the top. Then add loop cuts near the top and bottom of this ring. Then add loop cuts above and below where the bottle widens. Then add a loop cut near the bottom of the bottle. Next, switch to face select mode and select the bottom face. Then press I to inset. Then press I a second time to inset again. We're done with the bottle and the only thing left to model is the straw. So tab into object mode and press 3 on the number pad for side view. Then turn on X-ray. Now press Shift A and add a mesh cylinder. Next, tab into edit mode. Then scale by pressing S then point 1, then enter, then press S, then Z, then 24, then enter. Now rotate by pressing R, then minus 6, then enter. Then move it by pressing G, and then move it here. Now tab into object mode, turn off X-ray, and make the lid visible again. Now let's make a floor for the bottle to sit on, and then set up some lighting. Then we'll be ready to set up the materials for the bottle. So press Shift A and select a mesh plane. Then scale it by pressing S. Then 100, then enter. Then press G and drag it to the bottom. Now press 7 on the number pad for top view and select the light source. Change the power to 5000. Change the radius to 3. Then duplicate it by pressing Shift D and drag it here. Now we have a good environment for setting up the materials. So press Z and switch to rendered view. I'm going to turn off overlays for this part. Then set the render engine to cycles. If you have a supported GPU, you can select it here to speed up rendering. I'm also going to set the world color to black. Now select the lid and add a material. I'm going to set the base color to a hex value of 1B6C64. Then set the roughness to 0.4. Now select the mouthpiece and click here to select the same material. Then select the bottle and again click here to select the same material. This time we're going to make a copy of the material and then modify it. To make a copy click here. Then set the roughness to 0.1. We're going to make the bottle transparent, so set the transmission weight to 1. Since the transparent bottle has no thickness, it makes it look as though the bottle is full of liquid. Here are a few of the renders that I did from different angles. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.